Present asynchronously in Google Slides. We're signing the new functionality klaxon for the start of February as there is a new function arriving in Google Slides and we think you're going to really like it. It's been a while since we had a big new function that was solely for Google Slides, so let's take a look at video recording in Google Slides. The new function is coming online from today in scheduled release environments, so if you don't see it yet, you will be seeing it soon. The function allows the user to create a recording of a presentation with an optional embedded camera view, all within the slides interface. Currently, the feature allows for 30 minutes footage capture with multiple recordings possible. So, for those of you who have been using a subscription service like Loom to capture short presentations, this could very well be an alternative. Recordings can be accessed from the file itself or from the automatically created screen recordings file that appears in their My Drive. Users can move the file within the Google Drive ecosystem opting to share with project teams and departments by locating the file in a shared drive. Alternatively, they can share to named guest collaborators, both internally or externally, or even take advantage of the new share options to grant permissions to Google Groups for Business or append to a meeting invite. There are just so many ways to give the right collaborators the right permissions whilst leveraging Google's at-rest encryption. So let's take a look at how we access the function. First up, it's important to note that the recording function is only available currently in Google Chrome browsers. Secondly, the user must have editing permissions to the document in order to access the recording functionality. The record icon appears here on the toolbar. Click to reveal the pop-up menu and select record new video. The recording screen will appear with the capture window displaying centrally. The controls from this point are very simple. I can choose to mute the microphone for all or part of the record. I can turn on and off the camera capture as required. The picture in picture size icon offers three capture options, small, medium or large. And the position icon allows the picture in picture to dock to any of the four screen corners or center on the slide. Directional arrows allow the user to click through next or previous slides and speaker notes are available in presenter view, which can impinge on the record window without being captured in the record. To begin the recording, click the red start record button. A pop-up will confirm permissions to share the tab containing the slide deck, meaning that no other tabs will be exposed in the recording. And the pop-up requests permission to access any audio in the tab. This will capture any audio from embedded videos, GIF, etc. that might be required in the presentation record. Clicking Allow will start the three-second countdown to record. Speaker notes can be engaged even once the recording has started and depending on camera position can aid with camera eye contact during record. The user does not have to engage presenter controls. Also, picture in picture position can be changed while recording in response to content positioning on slides, as can the picture in picture size. This dynamic presentation can be engaging for viewers, but having used it a fair amount myself, I can vouch for the requirement of a few trial runs to really get this to work smoothly. A recording can be momentarily paused using the central record button, and users can click the button again to resume record. To scratch the recording and start again, click the re record button, and finally, Finish the record by clicking Save to Drive. The application will save the recording and begin uploading to Drive while the user is returned to the editing interface of the file. If possible to see that next to the recording icon, there is now a video indicator showing one slide recording is attached. 
click into the recording pop-up menu and any available videos are visible. Clicking on the video will open the video player and options menus. It is worth noting here, whilst only editors can use the record function, anyone with file access can see and click through to the recordings in the file. The file can now be shared to named contributors using the familiar share button. The video is also available from the user's My Drive as a folder called Slides Recordings is auto-created and all videos added there initially. It's possible to share from My Drive or a user may choose to relocate the recording using the Move function. This allows the user to move the recording within My Drive or if they have the correct permissions to add the recording to a shared drive. Lastly, within the file, the recording can be renamed. This can help differentiate between different recordings of the same presentation. Rename the recording either in the drive or in the file itself, and the new name will flow through to the other. Having different recordings can be quite useful, especially if you create one master presentation and use the skip slide function to show or hide slides relevant to the audience for your recording. In this way, I can create a truncated presentation for the head office team and a fuller, more detailed presentation for the frontline worker team. Other existing functionality can be combined usefully with this new recording feature. For example, one might create a recording and name it before using the approval function to request a manager to review and approve for use. The approval function is available from the More menu at the top of the recording window. Click to make a request. Enter the name or names of the approvers required and add an optional message. A due date or a due time. Click OK and wait for the approver to complete the process. Once approved, our recording will have an approved banner across the top. Another small function that dropped in January is the ability to share a video to a collaborator with a link to a specific time. This is super handy for any user who wants to direct a colleague to a specific part of a video, perhaps to advise on a technical query, give details on a benefits policy, or simply to remind of a piece of information delivered at a company update. To do so, locate the time you wish to share in the video, click the arrow to the right of the share button, select copy link to this time, and now you can take this link and drop it into a chat or an email or a document to give quick targeted information. This is definitely a winner for me. This one's definitely a winner for me. With a little creativity, there are so many ways in which you can put this functionality to use, from team briefings, to asynchronous delivery of feedback, benefits, presentations, the list goes on and on. So get personal whilst delivering asynchronous communication. We think you're gonna love it. Until next week, see you then.